Hey, so welcome back to our marketing and social. This is episode three of three with Jason Pantana. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Today, we are going deep into tactics and I have so many questions to ask. I'm gonna request though that we go rapid fire and and we try and be mindful because I would love to get through all of these. So all we're right. just jumping right in. Keep me right on pace. In. You know, I'll start talking in the weeds. I well, because you got a lot of information, my friend. So <laughs> hence marketing edge. Here we go. Ready? So what what are your thoughts around custom audiences? Uh, and specifically below that video views, Instagram, Facebook engagement, database, uh, CSV, geo filters. That's a long, big question, but yeah. there's a lot there. All right, so custom audiences. So custom audiences for people watching and they don't know, it's mostly we're talking about Facebook marketing right now. Yes. Specifically, I'm talking about Facebook remarketing opportunities. Yes. So I teach remarketing. It's basically marketing follow-up. We go deep about remarketing at Marketing Edge, mm -hmm. uh, but really it's just marketing follow-up. You've seen some of my stuff before, and we teach this concept of Marketing Edge called cold audience, warm audience. Cold audience means I don't know them, they don't know me. And my objective is take that cold audience and warm them up. Yes. The reason for doing that is because we know like remarketing ads are about 70% more effective at getting clicks mm -hmm. to the website where we get the leads. So yes. just take my word for it. Remarketing is an effective strategy versus just throwing ads at people who have no context, no trust. I'm kind of going back to our first I build familiarity. I was the same thing. Yeah. Build familiarity, create trust, and then yeah. boom, you're in. All right, so now so, custom then, audiences. Then video views, Instagram, Facebook engagement, database, CSV, geo filters. These are my options for custom audiences. So like on Facebook, when you run an ad, most of you have probably done like a boosted post on Facebook. And you're yes. like, my only options are to people who like my page, friends of people who like my page, yes. or I can map a particular area. Yes. You're highly limited unless you go into your ads manager. Mm -hmm. You go to facebook.com slash ads manager, ADS manager. We've talked about that on this podcast before. Yep. And you can create what's called a saved audience or a custom audience. Mm -hmm. If you create a saved audience, what it does is it actually adds that to your list for a boosted post. Got it. So I get I can add my own options that are custom and I can create, so this is a little technical, but the saved audience, I can create it consisting of numerous different types of custom audiences, such as people who watch my videos. So for example, yes. I could say like, hey, I wanna show this ad, whatever it is, to people who watched this video, this video, and that video, but not this one or that one. And they had to have watched at least 10 seconds of these videos, and they had to have watched at least, I don't know, 25% of this video and this video, and 95% of this video. So, so just for context, that could be like, I'm trying to attract uh, first time home buyers. Yes. So anybody that's watched 90% of my, this is how we help a first time home buyer. Yep. Anybody that wants 25% of my, this Listing is how you video fix your credit. Yeah. This is the six most affordable area video, you know, like, so you could literally be that yep. tactical. You could. So the, but the basic general idea of custom audiences, mm -hmm. which just to be super specific, custom audiences are inside, like, Think of the custom audience as the book inside the book bag and the book bag is the saved audience. So I yes. can add more than one book in there. Correct. Does that make sense we on a have, basic level? Have, exactly. Yeah. You know, internally for us, anyone that's watching this or listening to this knows that I run a lot of Facebook ads and they are segmented into a multitude of custom, uh, custom audiences. Yeah. They might think past client sphere. They might think yes. uh, people that they generated from uh, Boomtown leads yep. or from open houses. Or so, you know, so you can have a, a multitude of these. All totally. Right. You can add, so you can add your database with a yep. CSV file. Yes. You can, you can actually say anybody who's engaged with my Facebook page in the past year year, six months, whatever, or they liked particular post yes. or who's engaged with my Instagram business profile. Yes. So the whole point of it is custom audiences. I see them as a massive opportunity for remarketing to people who are already saying, I want more of this. Yes. Bottom line. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. Well, let's go to the next one. Yep. Uh, what are some of the newer trends you're seeing right now, specifically with Facebook mar marketing? Yep. And I want to talk about little messenger bots as well. Well, that's really what I'm seeing is a trend. Okay. So like these messenger bots, uh, what, what is a messenger bot for the person that's listening? And maybe watching it doesn't know what we're talking about. Yeah. So really we're talking about what are known as chat bots. Mm -hmm. So chat bots are basically like programs. They're faking conversation. Like for example, Domino said, Hey, text us a pizza emoji and we'll send you a pizza. Yes. Did there, was there an actually like a delivery guy saying, Oh, another pizza emoji. Let me go deliver this one. Or was there a program, a yes. computer program yeah. designed to receive that? And software. Interpret it. Yeah. That's all a chat bot is. Mm -hmm. uh, chat bots could be on WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook. 
They could be text message based. They could be any kind of a chat based setting. Yes. Specifically, where we're seeing the most opportunity for chatbots is in Facebook Messenger, which, if you're paying attention to what Zuckerberg's talking about with Facebook, he's about to put a lot of emphasis in Messenger and WhatsApp. Yes. He's going to build out those small group, intimate one on one conversations. So, what we're starting to do at Marketing Edge is getting people ready for when that takes full uh, scale yes. as far as Facebook preeminence and all that kind of stuff. So messenger bots. What's the earliest thing someone should do today if they don't have a messenger bot associated with their Facebook business page and or personal page, et cetera? If they don't, so they, don't. they should, so there's, if you can go to Facebook and you just Google Facebook messenger bots, you're going to find a bunch of bot makers. Some of the more popular ones are mm -hmm. chat fuel and mini chat, M A N Y chat. They have free versions. You can go hook up your account. It's like you literally tap a button, say, log in as me on Facebook. It connects your account. Yep. And you basically just build out what do you think the conversation sequence will be like. Yeah. I say this, and then I give them a multiple choice, this or that. If they say this, then I respond this way. And you so script it's it the, out. If this, then that. Which Very much. Any marketer understands. If they respond this way, I say that. Yeah. If they respond this yeah. way to that, I do this. Th yeah. th and you build out sort of that wireframe of conversation. So you're looking for sounds a specific. Com sounds complicated. You know, it's not. I mean, it depends on your, your proficiency, but I mean, it's but the less software, complicated. The software says, how do you think most people respond? And then it, it no, doesn't show not even you how, how to build it out? Not even how. So in Facebook Messenger, there's a thing called a quick reply. Mm -hmm. Have you ever like seen a little blue bubble pop up and it's a recommended what you should say? You yes. tap it and it turns into text? Yep. You can create those. So I can tell them exactly what they can or can't say. I can limit the conversation and restrict them. Are you going in this road or that road? Yes. And so the basic gist of it is you come up with what are some repeating scenarios in my business where I could have the same conversation over and over and over again, yeah. which by the way, is the basis of a script of any type. Exactly. And so a common example is it could be a giveaway mm -hmm. or uh, it could be, what's your home worth? Yeah. And then it's a whole questionnaire. Download this free, you know, free report, yeah. request more information. Yep. Hey, would you like to schedule an appointment? Maybe we can chat over the phone. You're seeing people who are doing listing, like, hey, check out our new listing. If you wanna get a full virtual tour, you can send a message and then it activates the chat bot. Yeah. And they're asking you questions like, are you working with an agent? Would you like to see the property? And all this yes. kind of stuff. And it's literally qualifying you. And it's saying, here's the video, check this out. What did you think? What are you looking for? And you can build out a whole dynamic conversation. And I gotta be honest, like, Imagine you're the playwright and you're like, all right, when I go to an open house, for instance, I was just what is the like, normal put, conversation put the context? Yes. I say this and then you say that. And yeah. if you say this, I say that. You basically pre-script it in your head. Just, yeah. you know, three, four, five exchanges. It doesn't have to be overly, overly elaborate, mm -hmm. but you have a conversation where they're, you're, you can qualify leads yep. right in front of you automatically. Uh, we have coaching members who are doing this. Sandra Pike does this. Yes. Sean Ryan does this. Yes. Uh, Sandra does it as more of a branding play. So she'll do some form of a, a giveaway or something like that. She'll boost a post to her entire, basically her entire county yeah. for a giveaway. They're like, I want that. And then the chat bot literally starts having conversations with them. Like, hey, you should check out our website, check out our listings. And people are clicking the links and going over, all over the place. So you're having powerful conversations. Uh, is it a little technical? I suppose that it could be. So was learning to fax something. Yeah. So was learning to drive a stick shift car. What well, I like about 20, him- It's 2019, like- Yeah, what I like about him is one, Zuckerberg's a fan. Yeah. Like they're being promoted. Yep. Facebook's working closely with the developers who are creating these things. The developers are the one doing the hard work. They've yes. created very easy user interfaces that almost look like, imagine you're in a Word doc and you mm -hmm. have a toolbar. I want to use the bold, the italics, the underlines. You have a toolbar, only the toolbar is like, I want to ask him for an email here. Click that. Yeah. I want to, uh, you can even like make it look like they're typing. Mm -hmm. So like that's the dot, 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 as if you're act in an yes. active conversation. Yeah. I can program that out Yes. to make them, to make it simulate a real conversation. But point of it is, yeah. I see these as effective tools to qualify leads, to get leads early stage mm -hmm. and other applications. Okay. I'm thinking about jumping to YouTube, but I'm going to stick with Facebook just for a second here. Do so it. Facebook uh, rapid fire, two or three best Facebook best practices, yep. hacks around yep. maybe marketplace, co-host events, you know, you know, short form video. What do you recommend? Uh, 
let's talk about, let's go through those. So okay. marketplace would be one to start with. Uh, this is a very simple one. Promote your what, listings. What is the marketplace so they understand? Facebook marketplace is like the buy, sell trade of Facebook right now. Yeah. It's, you, they always have the little red logo because they want you to go there and check it out. They're trying yep. to promote it. It's where you can sell your old skateboard or your yes. Michael Jordan basketball yeah. cards. This is eBay, or, and, you know, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Anywhere you could sell your stuff. Including your listings. Yes. And so the recommended yes. action is put your listings there. Like for example, we bought an old piano, like a vintage piano there. Mm -hmm. And the way you inquire about anything for sale is there's a button that says, ask for details. You click the button and it sends a private message to yeah. the owner of that. Yeah. Well, if it's your listing, you get a private message. So literally people are gonna be messaging you all day back and forth and you can respond. Yeah. Or better yet, buyers, you could create- Buyers are asking questions about the listing or your piano. Well, and the cool thing is like the ask for details is a standard script. Like it clicks a button and Facebook just says, so-and-so is asking for details on this. Yeah. I could create a chat bot to have that whole conversation if I wanted to. Oh yeah. So I could be literally fielding leads from every listing on Marketplace all day long for free. My seller is gonna love me for it and it's a win-win. Yeah. That's my thought on it. Beautiful. What uh, about uh, co-host events? All right, so co-host events is kind of a little hack around events. Uh, this idea, like so we talked about Eric Eikhoff last episode, I think, yes. where he's doing those um, weekly trainings or whatever yes. it is. How to, how to become wealthy with real estate. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. that thing. So for example, he had Bigger Pockets do an event yeah. with him. And so they're coming in. Now, Bigger Pockets has an unbelievably huge audience. And so the strategy was get Bigger Pockets to be a co host of the mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. So all their people get notified of the Fulton Realty event. Bingo. You can do the same thing. Like imagine you're doing a client appreciation party or any kind of an event, like a neighborhood event. Yes. And you're going to do it at the neighborhood local lounge or something like that. Get the lounge business page to co host with you so all the neighbors get notified. Bingo. It's just a cross promotion, is yeah. all that it is. It's beautiful. Yep, it's beautiful. Co host. Just right. little simple so things in the Cross easy. promotion. Love it. And then these 180 to 200 second videos. Um, you know, I'm a fan of videos. So, what are your thoughts so there? So, you're talking about that report we had last time. So, the yeah. uh, Sumo report. Yep. Again, they were going through optimal length of video. Yep. So, in LinkedIn, it's shorter, like 15 to 90 seconds. Yes. But in Facebook, the best length of a video is about 180 seconds to 200 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's the absolute sweet spot. And if you look at it on a chart, it's like head and shoulders above any other level. Mm -hmm. So what's engagement, it's hearts, it's likes, it's comments. It's what's going to get you more reach. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and I would add one more to that. I would also talk to people about cross posting their videos on Facebook. Talk to us about that. All right. So a lot of people have more than one business page. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, I'm going to use Tim Macy as an example. Mm -hmm. He's in San Antonio. He has a business page called SA Every Day. It's San mm -hmm. Antonio Every Day. It is all about his neighborhood community. And he also has Tim Macy Realtor as one of his pages. Mm -hmm. He can create a video. Like let's say he creates, uh, uh, there's a local park series or whatever. And he does like a, hey, I'm going to do a walk on the park, let you see what it's like in our community. We love San Antonio, yada, yada, yada. Something like that. So he creates a video like that and he can post it, but where does he post it? On which page? What do you think? Tell me. Both. He can, both. Yeah, So Why? cross posting. So cross posting is different from sharing a yes. post. You share a post to your profile and what that does mm -hmm. is it sort of, it almost frames the post where it's like, here's your post and we're gonna stick this other post on top of it. You can mm -hmm. add your own caption. Yeah. But it's we not- We talked about a, that on the last yeah, show. We did. It's not a, it's not- the same thing. Cross posting is you would not know that I didn't post it on each of the pages. Mm -hmm. It takes the same video and it posts them on all of my pages. And like, if I like it on one page, it doesn't show the like on the next page. Mm -hmm. But if I view it on one page, it does count the view on the next page. So like, for example, the Tom Ferry show, yeah. that's posted on your, on your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and you embed that video on your blog. Correct. And so if I watch it on your blog, does it count a view in YouTube? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So same kind of a thing here. If you post it on one, it's counting views on both. But the really crazy part is let's go back to those custom audiences mm -hmm. in terms of who I can remarket to. I can remarket to anybody who's viewed my videos, any of my videos, certain portions of my videos, and it does not matter which page they viewed it on. So I can create basically a stealth page, which is all about my community, which makes it from a consumer standpoint, I would argue easier to like a page like that because mm -hmm. it doesn't run the risk of I'm going to sell real estate services yeah. or whatever. It's yes. softer. It's more indirect, which is in, it's consistent with Facebook being that involuntary platform that mm -hmm. we talked about. Mm -hmm. And so cross-posting your videos is a way to get more reach okay. and a better remarketing list. 
Love it. Okay, let's let's talk about video for a second. So yeah. YouTube, share with us some of the best practices for uh, specifically improving SEO for for YouTube because more and more, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so jazzed. So many people are creating video now and, yeah. and not enough. So if you're not creating, totally. I want you to create more. Yeah. Um, don't let yourself off the hook. But there's so many people doing it now that it's so crowded on YouTube. Now SEO really matters. It does. So can you, I mean, I, I wrote down, you know, minutes, front loading keywords, yeah. thumbnails. We talked about a little bit of this with yeah, Rich we did. In, the, in the last episode, but, but speak, to, speak to the four big ones yeah, just so people are really clear. Let's do, and let's, and I want to frame it again. Like yeah. to me, YouTube is a search platform. And so my expectation on YouTube versus Facebook is different. Yes. I want to build a subscriber base, but I'm going to be frank with you. I don't know of many real estate agents, and I'm talking specifically yes. to realtors right yeah. now. I don't know of many who have a high subscriber count. No. They don't, but that doesn't exclude YouTube from having a benefit to them. Of course. And the benefit, I would argue, it's got a couple of benefits. One, it's a great place to store my videos. Yes. But it's more than a warehouse. It's a space where people will find my content later. Mm -hmm. There's this term Remember called- Remember who owns YouTube. Yes, that would be Google, which would be Alphabet. Yes. But same difference. Uh, so there's this term called evergreen content. Mm -hmm. It's a content marketing term, and it means that I create any kind of content, videos, blogs, PDFs, whatever, any kind of content. And it has a long shelf life, like a Facebook post, a couple days. Yeah. And then I'll never see it again yep. for the most, for the average person. Yes. It's like in my feed and then it's gone. We're done. So I have to keep giving you more, mm -hmm. but with YouTube, people find it through search over time. Yes. Now, Richard made some good points last time, like last episode, we talked about like a frequency of posting that does matter, mm -hmm. but there's some basic practices. Even if your frequency isn't like four videos a day, yes. there's some basic practices to increase the chances of you being found. That's SEO search mm -hmm. engine optimization. Mm -hmm. On YouTube, one, we'd recommend your videos being about 12 minutes or longer. Mm -hmm. That's the optimal time. There's Isn't been, that interesting when now people are hearing 12 minutes or longer? It really is. It, it matters. It we've does tested, matter. We've tested so many different like amounts of time. So keep going. Well, but let's frame that for a second. Yeah. So I just told you, yeah. well, we said 15 to 90 seconds roughly mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. We said 180 to 200 seconds on Facebook. Yes. Instagram varies depending yeah. upon if it's IGTV or post, Correct. but we don't have the data on the videos as what we know on videos on Instagram is they need subtitles, but yes. that's different. Yeah. Uh, Cause nobody watches with the sound on, but I digress. Yes. But YouTube, here's a different, it's different. We're looking at longer videos. Mm -hmm. So like the attention span is different. Yep. The intention of the user is different. I People come to YouTube. People go to YouTube and they binge watch for hours. Yes. I don't go to YouTube to watch videos for the same reasons I would choose to or not to watch a video on Facebook I, or Instagram. Or on Instagram. Exactly. I'm going to scroll all past it. Uh -huh. So it's more a split uh -huh. moment thing. Yep. So like, look at the Tom Ferry show. Yep. What you post the full length video on YouTube. Yep. You embed that on a blog post. Mm -hmm. You create teaser videos, yep. clips on for Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn yep. that are designed to drive traffic to the website Correct. where people can watch the video there, but it's just an embedded video because it really lives on YouTube. Yep. But they also go to YouTube and watch it too. And then it sends them back and forth yes. kind of a thing. But the point is the full well length said video right there, by the way, well said, you just nailed our entire strategy. I've taught it numerous, numerous <laughs> times, but they're watching the full thing. Yes on YouTube Correct. or on the website because yes. that's their intention. Correct. And so bottom line, we know watch time in Richard mm -hmm. reinforced this is yep. the number one metric. Yep. So longer videos, they want longer watch time. 12 yep. minutes is about optimal. Yes. Now you by should the way, look just at your really, analytics. Just really fast. This is where you should be literally grabbing your phone, hooking it up to your car, driving through neighborhoods and explaining this is, you know, the whatever. The Christoph Irvine, Chew, Irvine right? Terrace, right? Yeah. And Irvine Terrace was established in 1962. And this is what, and this is why. And the homes were built by, and originally it was this, and the lot sold for that. Yeah. And you're literally driving the streets. And if you did that and posted every one of those videos, and it would take you 10 minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes yeah. to drive through these communities and tell the story of the community. And you posted one of those videos every week. And all of a sudden people are like, this gal knows every community in our area. There, anyone that's going to be searching for him, looking for homes in. That's literally what Matt Cheney does. He's yes. in Washington, D.C. Yep. He has a little selfie stick and a phone. He calls yeah. his video series on site and he goes on site every week to a different neighborhood like Georgetown or whatever. And he's like a history buff. So he yes. talks about the history of it yes. and he shows it around. And it's phenomenal. People yes. watch it, but it's so informative and it meets them where they are because of their intention going to YouTube. But Bingo. here's the other thing. Like mm -hmm. what do people watch on YouTube? The average user, just mm -hmm. on average, 
And I'm going to argue they watch either education or say, entertainment. Yeah, I was going to say entertainment was my first, right? And then I think myself is all education, education. books, audios, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Speakers. not what they watch on Facebook. Now, no. maybe on Facebook watch, yeah. which is a little different. Yes. You don't have to worry about that because your stuff's already going there anyways. Correct. So just let it do its thing and yeah. let Facebook figure that out as far as I'm yeah. concerned. But on YouTube... They're looking for different content, which, by the way, I think this explains why most agents don't have a high subscriber count on YouTube. Correct. It's because it's not really, that's not necessarily what people are flocking to YouTube to do. No. That doesn't mean you can't get business off of it. We know Chris Kwan, we know Amber Anderson, we know plenty of our, we know you, <laughs> yeah, we know you for sure, yes. but we know it works, but yes. it works differently than, it's not about, it's not about getting like all these subscribers for no. the real estate agent. It's no. about getting views and having content like lying there waiting for the yep. person to search for it. Yeah. So 12 minutes or longer. Okay. I'm going to say, because we covered front load keywords, thumbnails and-, and Did we do best, thumbnails before? We did a little on thumbnails. We actually said you have to have a good thumbnail. So maybe just because the other one, best keywords is the primary tag. We said, Google that and you'll right. find it. And you, have have to have it. A, you have to have a good thumbnail and it yes. should have the title or a okay, headline so, so in it. So most people are going to say, what is a thumbnail? And this is something that I remember being uh, with Gary Vaynerchuk two and a half years ago. I took my marketing team over. We spent a couple yeah. of hours with him and we were in New York on something. And he's like, the most important thing we do is the thumbnail, which means it's the photo that they see when they look at the video. Before they press play. Correct. Yep. So could you have any insight on what works, what doesn't? Uh, you, well, we know that bold colors tend to work best. Yep. Don't use red or anything that's YouTube's branded colors. Correct. You want to stand out. So make it like stand out like a sore thumb. Yep. Uh, Orange, we also, yellow, yes. green, blue. I'm yes. not kidding, guys. Look at look at my page. Yes. Orange, blue. Yeah, you use that light royal blue, yep. which sticks yep. out like a sore, beautiful thumb. Exactly. It does. And there's exactly. a purpose behind that. Of course. Uh, usually there's either the face of you or the presenter. So we yep. want to see a face. Yep. We want to... I love this hack. Ray Allen gave me this hack, one of our coaching members. He's like, have their mouth be open, like they're about to say something, because uh -huh. then your natural impulse is to want to hear them what finish are they the saying? thought. Yeah, yep, exactly. And then title text. You need big fat letters, some yep. kind of a headline. Yep. It doesn't have to be the exact title that's in the actual title of the video, mm -hmm. but something along those lines that tells me what this is all about. Yeah. It's, it, it is all, it's marketing 101. I was in this conversation with Jay Abraham. Everything has to have it has to punch you in the face and stop you in the tracks, right? Yes. So that's the color of the photo, that's what the photo is, and it's the headline of the photo that either draws me in or has me say, nope, pass well, and go to the next one. Here's, so like, this is not just YouTube, but yeah. I see like a lot of agents do market update videos. Yes. And if you look at the headline, it just says market update. <laughs> Where is the market update? Yeah. And on what market are you referring yeah. to? Which and market? Is this the stock market? Yes. Is this the, uh, you know, what's going on right now in Japan? It's the like, gold market, Tom. Yeah, it's the gold market update. No, yeah. I mean, you've got to give us specifics, right? Um, Sacramento, Corona Del Mar market update 2019. April yes. 2019. Better, yeah. April 2019, spring, summer forecast 2019. Exactly. That kind of stuff. Exactly. You got to get specific. Yep. And if you can add some visuals that make it look shocking, interesting, fascinating. Yeah. <gasps> Guess yes. what? Arrows pointing up, arrows going down. We used to do videos with like, you know, is your home sinking in home value and like literally putting it in oil yes. and the house halfway in the oil spill. And people are like, what? Here's what I double dog dare you to do. Go through your history on YouTube and just look at the thumbnails of the videos you watched. Yes. And then steal. Yes. That's R &D. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of videos, stories versus posts on Instagram. I know we're bouncing all the place here. That's right. Stories versus posts on Instagram. What's your take? Can we add one more to the mix? Yeah. Can we go IGTV stories and posts? Thank, thank God you're going to put IGTV because we are tr trying to crush it right now and it's really working. I know it does work. All right. Yeah. So we, we shadowed this, not shadow, but we alluded to it a little yes. bit last video. And we said that I think it's roughly, let's just call it round numbers, 60% of people watch posts or view mm -hmm. posts. Yep. And 30 remember, guys, of that's just what's stories. in your news feed on Instagram, right? Yeah. Like so what the square your photos. people that you follow, yeah. Yep, just the square photos, yep. what you post, your regular old stuff. Yep. So here's the deal. Most people are going to get more love from posts. Yes. Stories, on the other hand, there's no, sh there's no cap to how many no. I can do. So like the beauty of stories is I can do them over and over and over again yep. throughout the day and stay in front of people. One post a day should probably do it. I'm going to submit to you that you need to do both. What are you doing? I'm literally doing a story you're right a now story. while we're in the podcast, while you're talking about while I'm talking? doing stories. So it's we're doing video, video too. It was so all it's good. not yes. a freeze frame. It's no. not a still. Yes. Got it. So but we're talking nice about stories. You. Yes. I like to do my own freeze frames. That's how I jam. Uh, so stories Here's the real, here's reality. Like, let's just say yeah. I maxed out for time. I can't do all this stuff. I got to pick something. If I were forced to pick between posts and stories, what should I do? 
And my instinct response would be, I'm not sure you should be doing anything based upon that response. Yes. However, I would say to you, you'll generally speaking, I believe, get more out of post as far as reach is concerned, mm -hmm. but but that's not the only thing. It's not just about reach with stories. No. So stories, if you've never done them, like I tried to describe to my mother once, yeah. what is an Instagram story? And I'm like, well, it's just disappearing content. It lasts for 24 hours. It could be a picture or a video lasting up to six, 15 seconds a piece. And you clip them throughout the day and you can have annotations and stickers and gifts and all kinds of overlays. And my mom was like, what? Well, I didn't understand any I used of to, that, son. I used to describe <laughs> yes. it at Marketing Edge. I was like, you know what? We're just going to put my phone on the screen and we're going to do it together. Yes. Like we just literally, yep. we literally build stories together and my yes. phone is on the screen and I'm like walking around the room live yep. building stories at Marketing yes. Edge yes. because it's just way easier. But inside of stories, uh, they have what are called stickers mm -hmm. and stickers are just, it could be like a little heart thing. It could be a little it emoji. Could be, it could be the rock going, Ooh, it could right? be a gif. It also could be yeah. what city you're in. It could be what you time can, it you is. You can tag your location. Yep. You can tag the date. You yep. can tag the weather and temperature outside. My, or, my personal favorite is yes. ask me a question. Well, so let me go with that. Yes. So there are what are called interactive stickers. Yes. There's a handful of them. Yes. You can Polling. do one called ask a question, mm -hmm. do a poll, and yep. it's typically a yes, no poll. Yep. You can do a sliding scale where yep. they can drag the cursor How and slide do the you scale. Love this or hate this? You can do a countdown timer where they can yep. lock down a timer. Yep. Am I missing one? I feel like I'm missing one. I think you got him, but let's, okay. I'm going to just say to everybody really fast here. I presented something last year at the summit where I said, if I were you, and I, I showed like three slides, I said on an Instagram story, if you took a photo of a beautiful house in your community on a bright, sunny day, and you, the headline was simply, are, are you, you living good? in your dream home now? now? And the poll is yes or no. And guess what? The vast majority of people that did it said in real no. time, people were like, no, 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 no. And what do I do with that information? At, right. And then, but the next story they went to that says, have you had any thoughts of selling in 2019 oh. or 2020? Yep. Yes, no. And people were shocked. All of a sudden, one or two people said, Yes. yes. And they went, I just generated two listing leads sitting at the summit in the room while for Tom's free. presenting this for free. And it took me two seconds. Yes. It's so powerful. Now you can't do that every single week. That would become super Once annoying. a quarter. Once a quarter, no problem. But it's just think creatively, right? Well, These are tools to create engagement. The question about, hey, do you think right now is a good time to buy? Yes or no? Yeah. Do you think home values will improve? Yes or no? Any kind of, so we call these calibrated questions. Yes. A calibrated question is a yes or no question, but it's calibrated in the sense that whatever you say to me, it's going to tell me, are you on this side of the line or that side of the exactly. line? And so you like, for example, there's another one and it's slightly different, but it's, hey, if you're renting, send me your current rent payment. Yes. Just DM me. So by yep. the way, this is like the ultimate sticker is the DM at the bottom, yep. whatever. DM me. DM me, direct message me what you're paying in rent and I'll send you a listing in the area that you could own at a mortgage for the same rough price. Yes. And people like, we have people who did that. They're getting like 50 people like DM, I pay this much, I pay this much. Yes. And they're like, I'm really busy now. And so here's the hey, deal. Did everybody just like, for the people that are listening right now, like I just gave you a hack, he just gave you another hack. Like say that one one more time. All right. So can I clarify one thing on sure, please. all these things so yes. we can, I want to make it yes. stick. When somebody does like Tom's poll of, are you currently living in your dream home now? Yes or no. If they say yes, mm -hmm. or if they say no, it tells you who they are. Yes. And you, only you have the ability meaning, to DM them back. Meaning you're looking at your, their answers and you see every single person on your Instagram story who saw the story. It's so like, I'm, so Frank, and then I see Frank responded to the yep. poll. So I see who saw the story. Yep. And then I can see who responded to the sticker, which was yeah. yes or no in this case. Yep. Frank did. And Frank said, no, he's not. And in the next poll, he said, yes, he would be open to yep. buying. And then I can click the little direct message thing and say, hey, can I help you with that? And yes. I'm in a conversation. Bingo. And so all these things, these tappable elements and stories, and by the way, this is why stories do matter yes. on Instagram. It's not just about reach. It's about leads too. Yes. These are free yes. leads. Yes. Um, but it's also getting into the heads and the hearts and the minds of your customers. Like, yes. You know, I, I got to give the people well, like, that's here's all the deal. I'm here. Like give I the people what they want. Train your followers too. Like, and I'm going to get back to your, what you yeah. asked me in a second, but like, there's the one that's like, you can slide the scale and you can change the emoji. I can make it a heart emoji, a fire emoji. 
I've done a rainbow emoji, whatever you want. Yep. And, but here's what I'm getting at. I want to, I use those a lot because I'm trying to condition my audience to get used to interacting with my stories. Yep. That's an easy one. People love to drag it to the, from the left to the right. I say, uh, we're at the zoo. I'm like, how beautiful is today outside? And I've got like a sunshine. They just drag it all the way to the right. Yep. I'm training them to respond to future polls yep. and to my ask me anything questions yep. that I'll do. But with the, let me go back to the one with the rent for yep. a second. So the script is in essence, if you're currently renting in, I don't know, hashtag 12 South, like that's mm -hmm. Nashville or whatever. Yep. If you're currently renting in whatever your market is, send me or DM me, you can use that language, yep. message me your current rent payment, and I'll send you a listing you could own for roughly the same monthly payment. And you're making some assumptions on the mortgage at that point, but you can get into those details in the conversation, yes. right? And here's the deal. No matter what the story is, if it does or doesn't have a poll, a sliding scale, a whatever, you can always, there's always at the very bottom, a uh, send message, send yes. message, send message. So like you're playing for DMs. That's yes. the whole point of it. Now, I want to just make a, a comment for everybody listening right now. Like we're giving you these ideas because look, at the end of the day, like we want you to generate more business, right? That's the point of this. The thing that I want to stress to you though, where I probably get the greatest, um, brand recognition, uh, love, connection, affinity, shares, yep. et cetera, yep. is either A, when I'm answering people's questions. Now, I have a lot of followers, so you might say, I only have like, like 200 followers. Well, if three people ask you a question, right. that means it's on the minds of a lot of other I people. Was, so don't, don't invalidate I was scared to do it because I didn't think anybody would ask me questions. And, and I, I got watched, like 50. And you got a lot of questions. <laughs> and I've done it more than once now because yes. I, 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 I can't, Honestly, I'm impressed by your ability to answer all the questions. I get thousands and it's insane the level of detail that I, people I, will share with me. And and then oftentimes because it's personal, I'll just send them a private message and say, yeah. hey, no, you probably shouldn't divorce your spouse. You might want to seek therapy first. Like I was like, whoa, that person just asked that publicly. Yeah. So it's super huge. But here's the other thing I want to say, and, and please validate this if you have some data or insight, is people like, again, familiarity creates trust. Trust creates leads. Yes. Right. So if people become familiar with what you do and how you do it, the behind the scenes of how you operate in your business, yep. right? Like I'm constantly showing people, Hey, walking into a meeting. Hey, we just were, you know, interviewing everybody on the summit. Hey, now I'm doing a creative session with my team. Now we're doing a social meeting. Hey, I'm writing right now a new book. Cause I want to help my, you know, more customers and, and it's happening every day, but there's also then I get home and I'm with my dog and I'm outside and look at this view and check this out. And I'm with my kids and I just had this conversation and we're at wow. a tennis match. Yep. And, and what happens is people go, okay, I know Tom Ferry is a coach, but Tom Ferry is also a husband. Yes. He also goes to the gym every day and yes. tracks his numbers every day of how yes. many gym and like, and sometimes he shows us these nutty things he's doing, but then he's with his kids, then he's with his mother-in-law and then he calls it quits and they get the whole story of you, which makes you more than a real estate agent. Yes. It makes you human. Well, let's go back to what we familiar. talked about. We talked about don't break character. Yes. It's one of the key themes. And I think it was the second, I've lost yes, track. I, I think know. it was the second podcast. One of the podcasts. Did. If you're just listening yeah. to the first one, this is actually number three of yeah. uh, three different podcasts. Yes. And there was podcast zero that spawned all these. Yes, three. But anyways, exactly. but the point is like, you don't, you got to have a, you, they're called stories for a reason. Yeah. It's because you're telling the story of yep. you. Yep. And you're like, well, I'm such a narcissist for doing that. No, you're an Instagram user. And that's the whole freaking point of having and a, an account. People love it. We yeah. talked about, you know, selfie nation and all that stuff. So I'm going to hit you with a totally different question. Um, we talk a lot about advertising. We talk a lot about door knocking. We talk about direct mail. We talk, you know, no wrong way to do it, right? Yeah. And yet uh, the thing that people so grossly underutilize in their marketing and there's so many hacks that you can share on this one, so just get ready, is email. Oh. Email. The number of people I talk to, I'm like, so how many email addresses do you have? 8,600. How often do you send an email? Maybe once a month. I'm like, Why? are you insane? Right? Like, and, and when you send, what do you send? They're like, I don't know, send them some listings, maybe a yeah. social thing, yada, yada. So one of the questions is, obviously, like, what would, say, your overarching email strategy be, right? It's a big question. And then mm -hmm. what are some of the software solutions, ESPs that people, cause like I talked to agents like, well, I'm trying to send it through my Gmail account and they oh. limit me to only, oh. you know, 500 or a thousand. And I have 8,000 emails. And I'm like, are you nuts? So, so just, I mean, all things yeah. email, Jason, talk to us. So I think a healthy question to begin with, like if I want to build a strategy, 
where I deliver email of value, I would say, what would I have to talk about that if I sent somebody an email every day, they'd be thankful for it? Yes. Like Seth Godin, who sends me an email every, every day, day and I right? read it every day. Yeah, I have emails that I read every day. Yep. Now, there are some days where I miss the email. Sure. But most of the time, like I don't unsubscribe because yeah. I want to get to it. Yes. So it boils down to what's the value you're going to give. Yeah. And we talk about, like, if you've watched all three of these podcasts, by now yeah. you're probably like, I can't do all this. There's so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Unless you realize how many times the content overlaps. Yes. Like the same video that I use to generate awareness and trust on Facebook is the same video I send to my database through an email. Yep. Hey, did you see this by the way? It's the same video I use in an ad to retarget them. It's the same video on YouTube. Yep. And I slice it up six, six, 12 different ways, yes. whatever. And I get yep. mileage out of my content. Yes. So I want to, I want to stress this. If you're overwhelmed by all the stuff I can do, you need to boil down to like a the way we teach marketing edge is we teach the framework first. Yep. And then the second section is all about getting the content. Yes. And the analogy I use is imagine going to a restaurant where it's this gorgeous restaurant with plates and knives and forks and it's the atmosphere and the music's amazing. And they bring out your plate and there's no food on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be an awful place to eat, right? Yes, yes. And so the content is the food. It's the yes. videos. It's the blogs. It's the stuff you yes. talk about. It's you doing. It's the mm -hmm. post on social. It's the content. Mm -hmm. So you need to come up, like we talked about four video buckets, community yep. expertise, listings, and branding. Yep. Again, if you didn't watch the other podcast, you need to go do race, that. Yeah, Please go do that now. There. Do that now. But I want to be clear, like you have this content. How many different ways can I utilize this content? Yes. And one is email. Yes. So I'm thinking again of, we talked about him earlier, Mike Rennick. Mike mm -hmm. Rennick's sending an email, he does once a week to his entire mm -hmm. database of roughly 20,000 people. Wow. Some of them get more than once a week. In fact, if you're, he, he segmented his list. If you're, he has top, middle, bottom of funnel. Yep. If you're in the middle or bottom of funnel, you actually get two a week. If you're yes. in the top of funnel, you get one a week. Mm -hmm. And so what's he sending them? He's sitting, hey, here's a video we posted. We think about this and that. Here's a market update, this and that. Mm -hmm. It's, in other words, if I'm a real estate agent, why do you hire me? Yes. Well, you hire me. I mean, let's, we can be very analytical about this. I, I know real estate. You're thinking about, you own a house. You're thinking about selling. You want to buy a house. You want to know the market. It's your biggest investment, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm an expert. I think about wealth brokers mm -hmm. who stay in touch with their portfolio of customers yes. And it's like, hey, just informing you on how the market's doing. So yep. I would say as an overarching strategy, once a month is not good enough. But you're like, well, nobody opens my emails. Well, then that's probably something worth visiting. That, But that also could be, you know, the way that you're getting them sent. So we'll talk email service providers, but it's yeah. nine out of 10 times. It is the headline, right? Which is the subject line you put, Yeah. right? So if it's like, hey, yes. people think that's probably spam, right? And if it says, market update, people are going to go, I'm not interested to delete because what market is he referring to? Yeah. But if it says, you know, for example, uh, 2% increase in your home's value, check out why. Yes. Right. Might have, might give me a little more interest, right? Like, yeah. and if you really have a good ESP, it'll say, Tom, your home went up by 0.79% this yeah. month. Check it out below. Yeah. Now I'm like, Oh, okay. Like they're speaking to me. So just be clear. Like the, what is the national average of email open rates? Like 17, it's really 18. low. And in real estate, it's like 17, 18%. It's yeah. very low. Yeah. And yet we have, so we got plenty of room for improvement for sure. And, and again, we'll talk tests and all that stuff, but go back to your strategy. Well, so here's the deal though. We, we, we were talking about this out in your office a minute ago that we're seeing across every social platform, mm -hmm. a decline in reach. Yes. There's this thing in marketing called paid owned and earned media. I'm yeah. not going to get into too much of it, but the point of it is, do you own the people who like your Facebook page? Of course, you don't own anybody, but no, they're Facebook's users and Facebook's yes. allowing you out, you're leasing yep. them, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. I would argue that the only thing you really have, like it's truly your list, is your email list and the phone numbers. Thank you, your and database. Your, and your addresses. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And so if you're not leveraging email, it's our, it's your best vehicle to get to people. We were talking over at the uh, geometric growth thing with Jay. Yeah. We were talking on one of the chopping block segments about email marketing. Mm -hmm. And you were saying like, what's the number one site traffic driver for your company. Yes. And it was email marketing. Yes. Guess what? Like, this is also like, guess what Zillow's number one is? Email. Email. Of course yeah. it is. Everyone that's ever signed up for email or for something on Zillow, truly a realtor, any one of these and what's JC pennies. They don't exist anymore. How about like, uh, I don't know, Ferrari, any one of these sites you're interested in, 
You sign up for their list, they're sending you every week, every yeah, week, I'd come every up week, with, every week. And that's what drives the traffic. If I were going to be tactical about it, I would say like, let's come up with a few different series. Let's yeah. do my market update. Yep. Probably once a month on a market update is sufficient. Let's make sure it's specialized enough that it's not so generic. People have to ignore it. Yes. But a market update and give me your commentary. Be my Steve Harney and yeah, tell me what it means. Don't just give me this stat. Say, this is my interpretation of it. You know, buyers in this range are really hurt right yeah. now. Sellers in this range need to like price correctly. Like I got tell a, us your interpretation, be the expert. I got an email from another agent. I'm on a lot of agents email yeah. campaigns. Nice. I got one last night that I read and it was, Hey, here's this report. It's attached. Check it out. Read it and make your own conclusions. Here are the two things that really stood out to me. One and two. Now that was a great synthesis mm -hmm. of this is what he took out of it. And he's, he's giving me the short version of it. He's adding value. And I'm yep. like, so that market update like that, one, two, three key insights, yep. whatever it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's a whole bunch of data. Here's what that means. Yep. Give me the dashboard. That's an email I'd be sending yep. once a month. Uh, I would be sending out whenever I'm doing one of my videos that I'm sharing on Facebook, YouTube, et cetera. I would be giving that out to my people and saying, hey, check out our new video, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Ideally with a photo of it or at, at the minimum, just a link. Yes, yep. at the minimum, a link. It depends upon how well your list yeah. knows you, I would presume. Yes. But ideally I do the the bomb bomb where it's got the play button on it kind exactly. of a thing. Yeah. I do it like that. Yeah. Um, and then additionally, like if your people are on listing alerts, certainly get them on those. Let yes. them see what properties are being yeah. listed. Um, Brian Skates is sending just sold, just listed campaigns. Mm -hmm. I mean, sky's the limit. You can be sending more, more, more email. Yeah. You need to monitor the open rates. You need to monitor the opt-out rates. You need to not send people spam. They please, need to have opted in. please. Don't just grab people arbitrarily. If anyone ever says to you, hey, you can buy lists of emails, no. run from them. By the way, same thing on Instagram. I can get you 10,000 followers. No. Run. It is ridiculous. It is a scam and you will look like a knucklehead. Well, we, I could keep going. You're 100% right. Yeah. Don't buy followers. It's no, ever. It's about I'd engagement. Rather have, I'd rather have less followers and people that actually I'm activated with than a gazillion followers I, who I never reach. I know accounts that have way more followers than me and less engagement. Oh yeah. And then so they I. can lose, you know, it's, it, am I going yeah. to get okay, into so, it? Am I going to so get into it? Give me, give me four, five, six um, ESPs, which are email service providers yep. that, uh, that agents and lenders and young entrepreneurs should be looking at as a way to solve their yeah. email issues. Yeah. So I'll do that. And then I want to clarify, you said like some people are sending their emails through Outlook, through yeah. Gmail, whatever. Those are not mass email, bulk email sending no. services. Those no. are for personal emails. Yes. You're going to get flagged for spam if you're using them to yes. do that, number yes. one. And two, they're going to have a send limit. You can only send a few hundred or maybe up yeah. to a thousand. It depends yeah. on a daily basis. They're not for mass email delivery, no. to be clear. You need a dedicated platform for mass email delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, bomb bomb is an yep. example. So bomb bomb's yep. more video-based, yep. definitely a recommended choice. Probably the Coca-Cola, the most democratic, easy one is MailChimp for yes. most people. Yep. It is not any industry specific. They have lots of useful information. It's easy. It's even free up to a certain number of sins per month. Mm -hmm. So it's called MailChimp. Uh, I would say some of the more kind of popular ones that I'm hearing about now is uh, ConvertKit. Yeah. Uh, a Weber. A W E B E R. Like the letter A space Weber, like a uh, Weber okay. grill. Got a it. Weber. Yep. It's a pretty popular one right now. Drip yep. is a pretty popular Drip, one. Yeah. Uh, Send Grid, which hooks up with some CRMs, is mm -hmm. a popular one. Mm -hmm. You could do, I don't know, OmniSend, Constant Contact, Campaign Monitor, Happy Active Campaign, on Happy Grasshopper, whatever, on and on and on it goes. The, the point is listen, my friends, if you're sitting here right now and you've got 350 email addresses, 500 email addresses, uh, you have, you know, you know, I don't know, 1500 people that you met over the years at open houses. And you're, you're basically blasting them out through your outlook or your Gmail and wondering why you keep getting blocked. Huh. Right. And put on spam lists. It's you because, just found out. yeah, it's because you didn't have an email service provider. You need to put that on a separate piece of software that gives you the analytics, who opened, who left, why did they unsubscribe? If you, if you yeah. make that a feature yeah. and, and listen, data is King, right? Data yeah. is King. And you should be working with a, a provider who gives you at real analytics, because there are a lot of metrics that matter. Yes. You got to keep the list healthy. So for yes. example, open rate is an important metric. How many people are opening my email? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get fake numbers. You got to get, one that knows the difference between they opened it and deleted it immediately and they yep. opened it and looked at it for a few seconds. Yeah. Get a difference. But yep. you want to know about open rate. You want to know about opt out rate. That means mm -hmm. people unsubscribing. Yep. You want to know about your deliverability, which deliverability is a kind of a complex score, but yeah. it looks at a number of different things like your spam score, your sender score. Bingo. It will look at like, Hey, what is the server 
that's sending the emails. Like, so for example, a lot of, there are, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna read between the lines on a couple of things. Yes. There are a lot of kind of canned email delivery systems that exist in our industry. Yep. And they always go to spam. Yes. And if I had to guess why, here's my thought on my stream of consciousness yes. on that. This is probably the free one that someone gave you or probably. it's really low cost because you just wanted to have some automatic, you know, drip campaign. Yeah. So you've got, let's just say they've got 100,000 users mm -hmm. all sending the same email. Mm -hmm. And then one, two, 10, 50, 100, 1,000 start getting opt-outs, flagged yeah. for spam, whatever. Well, that server that is delivering, it's somewhere in, I don't know, Arizona, mm -hmm. and it's delivering all those emails on behalf of all those different users, yep. the server is getting a bad score. Bingo. And so your email is now getting hurt because all the other people who are sending email from the same server are hurting you. Yep. And so you need to work with the company that understands all that stuff. I don't need you to understand it. No. I just need you to work with the company who does yeah. so they can protect the integrity integrity of their servers, all their numbers and ratios and scores so that you can deliver an email into an inbox. And, and what questions would I ask that, uh, that company, that provider? I would just want to say what their dashboard is. So like, I mean, honestly, like AWeber, ConvertKit, they've got pretty good reputations on that mm -hmm. front. Mm -hmm. um, MailChimp's very, very generic. Mm -hmm. They do provide a lot of nice like spam scores, testing, mm -hmm. analytics. I don't have a lot of data on the integrity of their servers per yeah. se. I just don't know. Yeah. Um, so I would talk to the rep and say, hey, what assurances can you give to me mm -hmm. that my email is gonna get delivered? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go a totally different direction. Yep. Thinking about uh, my client, Gary Gold, uh, big shout out to Gary Gold and Rock Mauricio, star. who was the other uh, listing agent on the Playboy Mansion. And yes, the Playboy Mansion, listed for 200 million, sold for 100 million, I think it was. It was and uh, it was a significant it transaction, significant. right? So anyway, you add that up. And well, what commission did he get? And I think he Who bought it for cares? a million bucks. Yeah, initially. exactly, <laughs> right? You bought it for a million, which is just bananas. Pretty good ROI. Which all of you need to be thinking to myself, I need to buy more real estate. Uh -huh. But that's something different. I want to talk about... Um, Something that we actually discussed in another one of the podcasts, but I want to go deep around the how, the tactic of this. So if I'm looking for a competitive advantage on a listing appointment or why you should work with me, et cetera, one of the things is to be able to analytically track and measure your reach on social and then use that to tell stories. So we were talking about Sean, yeah. right? Who is killing it in this. Big shout out to Sean. And I think everyone needs to pay attention for a second here. Every agent out there says, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm going to, you know, uh, put your listing on social media. We made fun of this in the last podcast. We're making fun of it again. Um, I want you to be armed with something different. So, so Jason, I know we don't have a visual in front of us. We don't have a laptop in front of us for them to see, but could you sort of in your mind say, if you are on Instagram and you want to know how many people this reached, you need to go to here, here, here. Yeah, Same yeah, thing I with understand. Facebook, you with me? Like I understand. help somebody break it down. And, and I think, is everyone clear? I want you to be able to say uh, to your seller, when you're asking for a price reduction, we did this ad, this ad, this ad, this ad on this platform, this platform, this platform, this platform. We got this many views, this many hearts, this many comments, et cetera. And we have this much inside the MLS and this much inside Zillow and this much inside you know, Trulia yeah. and this much inside Realtor. Yeah. And overwhelmingly, the buyers are saying your price is incorrect, right? But how do they pull all that? All right, so good question. I'm thinking through the answer. Uh, you can do it manually. We have been podcasting all day. You, we have been. Yes. You can do it manually. Yes. Manually is like, so if I'm on Instagram, obviously I need an Instagram business profile yep. to be able to go back and look at my stories. And there's a thing called view insights. Yep. I can pull up any post. I can click view insights. It'll pull up a full screen and it's going to show me how many people were reached. What were the impressions? There's the difference between impressions and reaches. Reach is the number of unique people reached. Impressions is the number of times the, view, the post was viewed. Yep. Susie might have looked at it 28 times herself. I'm just like grabbing really fast here, just like some you know, view. So click view insights. <laughs> view insights. And then pull it up to the top. So right? slide that up. Pull yep. it up. And so, so we see profile visits, website clicks. We see uh, total accounts reached. Not yep. bad, man. Yeah. Total impressions. We see, this is interesting, Tom. Yeah. This is nothing to talk about. Yeah. It's not good. I can talk about it. Well, no, it's too, completely fine. It? Now, this is a, so remember, we talked earlier when you just post a- your hashtags. Oh, what's going on there? Can I, can I segue for a second? Please. All right. So I'm seeing this on my own too. Yeah. And I'll bet you a lot of people are. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah. saying that all of a sudden their hashtags aren't getting them reach anymore. Yes. Have you been noticing that? I have. That's so there's this new thing that's very enigmatic mm -hmm. called shadow banning. Mm -hmm. And it sounds very scary on Instagram. It does. Where- 
it, it, I started noticing on mine too, where mm. like I was getting 200 people coming from a hashtag or 300. Yep. You should be yep. getting 500 or 600 yeah. from hashtags and I'm you're getting like 20. See, and by the way, why do they not have the same thing on the videos? Like this is actually inside my IGTV. So I'm going to go to another photo IGTV just to is, see. So are you inside IGTV? You have to go to IGTV. No, I was, I'm on my front page. And yeah, I'm just you can't see at, analytics on IGTV until you go to IGTV and okay, look at it. So right. you would actually scroll up here. Okay. Scroll Show up there, me. you click IGTV, yep. and you do um, it there. And then so if you pull up one there, you'd be able to see analytics on it. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Well, so so but finish your thought around shadow this banning. Shadow banning. This shadow banning. Basically, nobody has documented what's causing it, but it basically says Instagram is trying to protect the integrity of hashtags. Yes. And so they don't want people spamming hashtags, using hashtags unrelated to their content. And mm -hmm. one of the things that we think they're doing to like, if you copy and paste your hashtags in from like a word doc or something, and you just yep. copy and paste them, which by the way is exactly which what is exactly what's doing happening. Forever. Yes. I mean, anyone in there, and right I was mind, doing it too, right, doing the same thing. They don't, we don't think they like that. Well, so clearly. we think, yeah, we don't think they like that. Now you're getting some people yep. who are clicking it from the hashtag. Yes. So you're like 24, you would think it'd be zero. Yeah. The 24 came from there is somebody who's following a hashtag or following you mm -hmm. and they found it through a hashtag they're following. So like, yes. this is complicated, yep. but I can follow, I do, I follow the hashtag Tom Ferry mm -hmm. and I could be following you and your post would still show up because we're following. Yes. But if I'm not following, which the whole point of hashtags is bringing new people in. Exactly. So if I'm not already following you, basically Instagram's like no hashtags. That's yeah. what we're thinking is happening. Yep. But as of now, we think the best thing to do is uh, the number of hashtags recommended is 11. Mm -hmm. You can get up to 30, but there's yep. some data saying 11 is the sweet spot. I don't know why that's true. And, and isn't just for the record, it's you want to have it be a basically the first post. Like you post your photo and then the first comment, comment. is your hashtags. Is that strategy there's no, so relevant? I've researched, is it better for the hashtags to be in the post or in the comments? And I yeah. haven't found any quantifiable data that says one way or another. Okay. But what we do think- I know we tested both. Yeah. And so I'll have to ask my social yeah. team. Yeah, what we do think is copying and pasting hashtags is a no bueno. Yep. And then also using hashtags that, that aren't related to your actual post is also ineffective. Yes. So you want to watch those, you want to watch those analytics and yep. make sure you're getting the people coming in because yes. Instagram appears to be trying to protect the integrity of hashtags. I love it. Okay, so That's back to the question around the how do we collect all the data? But that was a great little uh, side tangent. And sorry, I just noticed it. I was like, oh, yeah. I meant to talk about yeah, that. And there good. it was yes. happening. Yes. Even to it's all of us. It's yes. happening. All right, so we were talking about how email do I collect marketing, the data, right? Yeah. Oh, no, no, how, do I collect the data? how do I collect the data yeah, yeah, yeah. around all these social channels so I can more intelligently communicate to my customer, hey, uh, Jason, like this is what's going on. Like your, your property had this many views, this many likes, this many hearts, this many shares. Yeah, so right? most MLSs, not all, will give you those impressions. Mm -hmm. They're tracking themselves. Mm -hmm. You can log in whatever your MLS is and get that data. Zillow will give you that data. Yes. Realtor.com can give you that data. Truly the same thing. You've got to go into your profile, into your listings and grab the data. Yep. It, so it's manual. Yes. yes. It's, it's manual. That's yes. just all there is to it. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, your website goes, that depends upon your website provider. Google. They should be trying, like Google Analytics yeah. naturally would be the place to get that as well. Yep. Uh, so you need to have Google Analytics hooked up to your website. Some websites will have some of that metrics anyways, depending upon your provider, but you really, you should be using Google Analytics. Yes. You should also have your Facebook pixel installed so that mm -hmm. you can go into Facebook's ads manager and get the same details there too. Correct. So you can get information on how many people viewed it in an ad and also what was the engagement on other places like your website. Yep. Uh, as far as Instagram goes, it's the view insights on each individual post. Yep. So I got to tell you, like- Same thing with a tweet. Yep, with a tweet, same right. thing. Same thing with a video. Yep. Right, So same thing on YouTube. Here's what I would say to you. Yeah. I would say, get a little spreadsheet, log 15 minutes, block it out like once a week and yep. go through and do the report yep. manually. Now there are well, monitoring I gotta services. Share I just got an idea. You know what I'm actually thinking? It yeah. would be really cool for you to go back through and say, I'm going to do an analysis of, and I'm just going to use some broad numbers that uh, here's the last 30 listings I sold. Ooh. And, and here is the average of Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, yeah. MLS, blah, 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 blah. And then here are the five listings that didn't sell, expired, yeah. canceled, withdrawn. And here's the numbers, huh. right? That, I think that'd be interesting. And then I'd also look at maybe, gosh, can you, no, you couldn't go view insights of your competitors. Well, that depends. So I actually used to do that when I was actively selling. So okay. in my market, there was a showing center that pretty much booked everybody's showings. Yes. Like 90% yes. of the market. Yep. 
And they provided not super detailed, but they'd say in this area, the average number of showings this week were X. Oh, it's perfect. So I could say like, hey, most people got this many. We only got this many or we got this many. Yep, exactly. So it's just, it's more data that tells yep. a story about why Good. we're winning or losing. Good. Period. Okay. So we've gone deep here and we've covered a lot of ground on a few different categories. So I think it's time for us to wrap this one up. And I think the promise is for the people that are watching that maybe what we need to do is do a little Instagram story and say, once this podcast goes live, what questions would you, you most like asked for Jason? And so let's do that when we launch this. So for my friends yeah. that are watching, make sure you jump over to my Instagram page, check out the stories and uh, listen, you know, the day this thing drops, make sure you get your question in. Yeah. So we will notify you the day <laughs> that this goes out and there will also be an Instagram story uh, associated with, or excuse me, a question inside of Instagram story. Because look, at the end of the day, we're not just doing this because we like to, you know, I like to hear my voice and Jason's brilliance when it comes to the oh, depth on. of knowledge he has and all this stuff. But we're trying to help you be more intelligent, be a better agent, be a better totally. lender, be a better entrepreneur, be just be better in business and and just get rid of the story in your head about, I just never really got good at social and it's hard for me. And, and I'm just gonna say it again, if my 92 year old mother-in-law can get on Facebook and Instagram and play uh -huh. on there and it is a source for her of content all day long, I think you can figure it out. Well, and I, can I add one thing to that too? Please. Because we were sort of talking about this over lunch. Yeah. And it's this idea of like, I know it's so much. Every agent, we talked about ops, marketing, yeah. and sales. I'm so busy and I can't do this. I don't have time for all this. I just want the results. I just want to sell more houses. Yep. Those types of, their, their excuses is yes. what they are. Yes. And I, I respect the fact that there are many agents who are busy, but mm -hmm. I also know that this is their business. Yeah. And they've got to be responsible for marketing and lead generating. Bingo. Now, do they have to do everything we talked about? No. no. We're laying out a whole like library of, yes. you can do this one, this one, and this yep. one, whatever. But- the deal is, especially when it comes to social media marketing, there will be some newfangled thing that's really hot for a week or two or a month or two or a half a year or so. And then it will be saturated and exhausted and it's time for the next thing. So the people Bingo. watching this video, like I would just be like skim into the newest things that you can get yes. the most leverage out of, which we sort of didn't get into IGTV. Mm -hmm. I can suffice it to say you should be leveraging IGTV right now because yeah. They're trying to make it popular. Yes. And because of that, they're giving you free views, essentially. Yes, that's exactly so right. So you should be trying to do that. I'm seeing all my IGT numbers just absolutely spike. Yeah. All right, so let's go. IGTV really fast. Uh, we, were, we were ending the podcast, but you know, the sorry. producer says keep going. So, sorry. sorry. Sorry, listeners. You thought you were done. We're going. We'll, we'll loop back. IGTV. It's like a plane that we missed our landing. We're yes. going back up. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to yes, lap exactly. around. We'll make this landing happen. Um, IGTV. So the biggest thing is they launched it. IGTV, just for context, is vertical form video in Instagram, IG, yep. Instagram, TV. And the whole idea is like you get 60 seconds for a video on a post. Yep. And the only way to make it longer is if you do a gallery where I string together multiple videos, which is sort of cumbersome. Yes. You get 15 seconds for a video in stories unless I go live and then yep. I don't really get a shelf life. Yep. But IGTV gives every person, they can create basically their own channel, mm -hmm. an IGTV channel. So IGTV is almost like, do you know how Messenger is sort of bolted on to Facebook? Yes. It's a standalone, but it's bolted on. IGTV is like bolted on to Instagram. Correct. So Correct. same kind of a concept. You build your own channel. You become a creator or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. And you can create up to 10-minute vertical form videos. And then it was all the rage. It came out in the beginning of, I think, last year or something like that. Yeah. And then like nobody started using it really. It was kind of dead and it was yeah. like crickets. And people just weren't really viewing the videos, myself no. included. Yes. And Instagram at some point appears to have gotten irritated by that. Yes. And so- what there is kind of like Facebook AKA Live. Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, who just says the whole world is going to video and we are going to control that. Yes. It's like Zuckerberg's like, just give them free views. Yes. Kind of that's yeah. how he talks. Make them, make them feel popular. That's how he sounds. Yes. Yeah. So like when live came out and this is still the case, they're going to give you like bonus points to go live on Facebook. It yep. just automatically, you're going to get a better reach just because uh -huh. you're live. Uh -huh. Why? Because they want to increase adoption of that yes. format because they believe in it. Same thing's going to be the case with, which by the way, this is a speculation. Right now they keep putting that send message button on your post on Inst on Facebook. Yep. Chances are they want to increase the popularity of Messenger. And so if you put post with the send message button, you're going to get extra reach. Bingo. Just a sidebar. Back Bingo. to IGTV. So with IGTV. The sidebars are half the fun of this podcast, I, by the way. That's how my brain goes. Yes. It's just how I, I didn't actually think about that until now. Yes. I was like, that oh, probably is true. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. We test that. Yeah. Um, so with Instagram, IGTV, they're like, nobody's using this. So we're going to add a feature where when you do an IGTV video, um, we're going to add a little checkbox where you can say, 
share like home feed preview is the terminology. Yeah. What it means is, and like you can look at Tom Ferry's profile, my profile, look at my IGTV and you see right the little now, IGTV yeah. logo in the mm -hmm. corner of some of the post. Yep. Well, they're feed previews. Yes. Meaning they're going to take a 60 second preview, the first 60 seconds mm -hmm. automatically mm -hmm. of your IGTV video. They're going to yep. put it on your profile, which means it goes into the home feed, which is where most boom, everybody boom, sees it. Yep. But it, but wait, there's more. Yes. Not only does it go there yep. on your home feed where there's going to be massive reach, I but we could just also like look right here. So you guys see exactly what he's talking about, right? Right. IGTV, IGTV. The by the way, look at, look at thumbnails. TGIM, thank God it's Monday. <laughs> yeah. Orange and blue. So you can actually podcast. add a, you can add your own cover image exactly. photo, just like you can do a thumbnail on YouTube. That's you can right. do a thumbnail. It's not mm -hmm. really a thumbnail. It's mm -hmm. a it's a cover photo for yep. your IGTV. I Absolutely. love the idea of the text overlay. Yeah. But here's the biggest deal. One, they do a feed preview on your profile grid. That goes out into your, we'll call it the news feed. It's yep. called the home feed, but yep. people can see it. Yep. And then they want to watch the full video. And it says, watch the full video. Yes. So, so first thing is you're already getting the extended reach of your profile, which is stronger than your IGTV following out yes. of the gate. Two, they're going to just give you extra bonus points. Like I've done side-by-side -side videos where I just post a video and then I post an IGTV preview and I'll get like about twice the reach on yep. the IGTV feed We're preview, same thing. which is telling me like Zuckerberg's like, just give them the views kind yeah. of a thing. Just, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. trying to create adoption. So just to be clear, we're talking about taking your coming soon video that you, you have on Facebook and other things and maybe on YouTube ultimately yeah. You're coming soon. You're, hey, this is how I work with first time buyers. Yes. Your community yes. videos, your yes. drive time videos, everything yes. is going into IGTV and Why you're not? picking up lots of extra views, building your brand creating familiarity, trust. <laughs> creating trust, and generating leads, right? Yeah, totally. No 100%. Brainer. No brainer. Any closing thoughts on uh, IGTV? Clickable links. That's a very good one, Richard. Nicely we got a done. shout out question from the producer of the show. <laughs> Nicely done. He's like, you guys aren't done yet. There's more. And for the finale, <laughs> normally in Instagram, where can you post links? And it's really been limited to your bio. Your bio, which Link is, just is in so bio, horrible. Except mm -hmm. because you got Zuckerberg and Facebook and Instagram saying, we really want this to be popular. We want to yes. compete and own video. And YouTube yes. is still like the king of video. Yes. We want to win. Because of that, they're like, we'll give them the links too, where you can yep. actually put links in there yes. and drive to your site. Uh -huh. You can even put links in your stories to promote your IGTV videos where the swipe up feature. Yep. And some of you are like, I have no idea what this guy's talking about, but that's okay. Some of you, you do know, know of your stories of you and know. on Snapchat, swipe up. I do. I, yeah. I shoot a promo for every show. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Today we're talking about this. Swipe up. Well, and so you're a verified account with more than 10,000 followers. True. I'm not. Yes. So I don't get to have the swipe up. So my normal calls to action will be DMs and story stickers. Yes. But with IGTV, they're like, we'll even give you the swipe up feature Ooh. if you drive traffic to the IGTV video. Yes. So I can now create the IGTV video, put links outgoing. I can create the story teaser to drive traffic to the IGTV, the home feed preview to drive to the IGTV where they give me bonus views. IGTV is like a, we're beyond a trifecta at this yeah. point of yes. benefit for using yeah. an IGTV video. Are you not talking about this at the summit? I know this is one of the not hot on there. topics. Okay, okay. all right. So, so I wanna make sure at yes. summit, I wanna make sure we really hammer video Yep. I want to make sure we hammer Instagram, including yes. IGTV. Yes. And I want to make sure we hammer Facebook Messenger and maybe even WhatsApp. Oh, yeah. Because I see it. some stuff coming down the road there. Oh, big time. How many, how many people are on WhatsApp now? I've got to do more research. I got yeah. to, I just know. I've heard like 2 yeah, billion. It's a lot. Yeah. I got to do more, but I know that Facebook's developing it out. Yep. And even there's some, even in the ads manager, I'm starting to see new features rolled out where yep. I can integrate WhatsApp yeah. as far as distribution goes and boosted posts. And I'm like, they really want Messenger Big and time. WhatsApp to build out. They want to control community and conversation. I think they just want to control us. <laughs> there's that too. There's that too. <laughs> yeah. But I have a whole other website, but I'm going to save want, that for they another want show. Messages. Is, they want yes. all of it, right? Yes. So, ah. yes. Hey. hey, hey, guess what? So does the cable news network. So does the cable companies. So do media companies. You know like, what? We're all going to the same. Like, exactly. There's they're giving me a platform this. to my audience. Exactly. Exactly. And I just showed you one that might help them in the future, but not yet. That's a tease. All right. All right. That's a tease. So, hey, Jason, thank you so much. I know, uh, you know, you got to fly back soon. For all of our friends out there listening or watching, just, you know, um, listen. 
This is probably one of those you're gonna listen to maybe on slow motion six or seven times, take detailed notes uh, and make sure you look out for that question of, hey, got another question for Jason Pantana or follow him on Instagram at Jason Pantana yes. and he will do his own questions. I got like 1,100 questions on like one one oh, day. Gosh. It's insane. I'm going to block some time for this. It, you, you know what? Th thank goodness for flying to London. Like it just right? gives me, and then I just drop like, you know, 400 at once. Bam. Right. Yep. But I, I got to tell you, my friends, I appreciate every single one of you for taking the time to listen to this, to ask questions, to participate. And most importantly, because you go out and you take action and you do what you do. So keep up the great work and we'll talk to you on the next podcast. Thanks. Thanks.